Welcome to the second video of IndieResource.com's Building in Web Browser MWORG. This is Halls of Valhalla. Uh, the first thing we're going to start out doing is, is we're going to download a text editor. I normally use Adobe Dreamweaver, but it's an expensive program, and since we all want to be able to use the same program, I found a free one. And if you go to Google or Yahoo and type in context, C-O-N-T-E-X-T, do your search and it should be the first link there. It's contexteditor.org. Uh, if you go to the download, it's like a two meg file, it's real small. And then once you get there, you can donate if you want. If you don't, alternate a download without making a donation. Uh, go ahead and get it downloaded and then install it. It's a real easy install. Uh, there's no point in me walking through it. This video is actually going to be a really short video. I just want to get the database built, just a couple little entries in there, and then build our connect.php so we can actually connect to it, and then we're going to test it. Uh, once you open up context, you can go ahead and pause the video until you, until you get it all installed and open. Go ahead and navigate to the C drive, to WAMP, www, and we should still have our tutorial file with our test.php. Okay. The yours is actually going to have something in here. Mine does not because I deleted it, and it's fine because we're going to delete it all anyway. What we want to do is, is we want to go ahead first and go down here to your WAMP icon, and go to PHP My Admin. Click on that, and this will actually open up your admin panel for your MySQL. And here's from here we can actually create the database and we can make any changes, add fields or anything else that we're going to be doing. We're going to be spending a lot of time in here throughout these tutorials. The first thing it's going to do is going to bring you to the local host, local host. We don't have any databases built yet, so we're going to go ahead and build one. And under create new database, let's name it tutorial. I recommend sticking with the name tutorial because if you change it, then every, you're going to have to change it everywhere we change it. We're going to use this database a lot. Click Create, use the default settings, and we now have our database created. Tutorial. First thing we need is we need a new table. Let's build one called Players. And number of fields, for now we only need three. And click Go. And now under your very first field, just ID. And for the type, let's leave it an integer, and our length, let's make it, we don't plan on having too many more than a couple million players, so let's leave it at 9. Uh, then we want to do the auto increment, check it, and the next, we'll go ahead and do name, for the name of the player. Let's do, change that to var char, which are variable characters. Length value, let's let them do up to 21 characters for their name. And then next we're going to go over to the field, our third field, which is going to be email. Now some people have some, some very long emails, so let's put it on variable character. And we are going to let the length be 55. After you're done, hit save or go. Go will actually add one more field, so you want to hit save. And now we can click over here on our tutorial database, and we have our players field here. We can go ahead and minimize this. Actually, let's go ahead and insert some data first. Let's click on our players over on the left-hand side. And up top here, you'll see insert. Let's go ahead and insert some data. ID you can leave blank because it's auto increment. As soon as you put in a field there, it's automatically going to give it the next available number. The name, you can let's just go ahead and put player one. For email, let's do player one at indieresource.com. And let's do go. and we now have a new player if you click on the tutorial again for the database and we click next to players you'll see the very first little uh, it'll come up to a browse it's actual browse under action if you click that it will show you your actual 
ID is one, name is player one, and email is the player at indyresource.com. When the second player or another player, the next person to fill in, his ID will be two and three and so on. Now we're done with the database, let's minimize. Okay, now let's maximize context. And basically what we need to do is we need to, the first file we're going to create is a connect.php. It's basically going to be what each page uses to connect to the database so it knows what database to connect to. Uh, the first thing we're going to start out with, what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're actually going to start out with our opening PHP bracket. Oops, my bad. I'm going to run through this and I'm not going to explain a whole lot because there's not a whole lot here you really need to know right now and it's kind of it may be kind of overwhelming it this is probably the most complicated thing we'll have to do for the next couple series and I don't want it to seem so so I'm gonna go I'm gonna explain it as I go but not a whole lot don't worry about it just copy it and connect will be done and we won't really have to fool with it much anymore so let's go ahead and do our PHP open bracket and first thing we're gonna do is is create a variable called DB which is for database all PHP variables start with a dollar sign it kinda defines it as a variable and we're gonna say equals my SQL underscore connect that is a PHP command now we're wanting to connect to the local host because that's where we're located and being that we never set up a username the username is by default root we never set up a password so it's going to be blank and what happens if this doesn't connect we want it to tell us a message so we're going to do or die could not connect to database Oops. always end with a semicolon and now we're going to say if not which the explanation point is not if not in other words if it's not defined if there's not a local host then we want it to die and say no database semicolon the only time you're not going to see a semicolon is after ifs and else's and I'll show that later on as we go so now what we want to do is we want to do another if statement if not my SQL select database if it cannot select the database we need to tell it what database so in other words if it makes the connection but it can't connect to our database which is tutorial at this connection which is the variable we just made then we want to die and say no database we'll say selected it's pretty common and I forgot my opening and that's basically going to be our connect file now we're probably going to add more to this later but this is all we need to start off with always remember to close your PHP now let's go ahead and save and connect dot PHP save now let's open up our test and if you have anything in test like I did just delete it we're gonna start completely from scratch and what we want test to do we're gonna this is just kinda gonna be a, a basic test that, that it's working that our database is selected so the first thing we need to do is create our opening PHP to tell the browser that we're wanting to do to PHP we want to include our connect dot PHP always in with a semicolon and now let's go ahead and do a query let's create a new variable called tutorial let's call it player info because we're going to get some player info player info equals 
select. Now an asterisk is an all sign, means select all. And you'll see how this works. Select all from, oh, from players. where name, which if you remember we put name as one of the fields, equals, and let's say we want to do a query on player one. So let's say name equals player one. Now we're going to do the query player info two equals my SQL Query player info, which is what we just typed out. And if we can't hit the player field for some reason, or the player table, or any other reason that we want to know why, so or we want to know that it happened, so or die could. Not select players, and you can put whatever you want there, it doesn't matter. Now we want to do a player info 3, which is going to be our last one. And the good thing is, is all these are the same. Most queries are going to be built like this. So once you learn this, you're good to go. You can do a lot with it. MySQL. Now, next thing we want it to do is we want it to build an array of all the fields for player one. So we want to do MySQL fetch array and we want to do player info two. So basically we're having it fetch an array of the query coming from player info that was select all players from player one and in it with a semicolon. Now, there is our, our query. That's the whole thing. That's, as, that's almost as complicated as it gets when it comes to queries. Now, there's a lot more we can do with this, but for now, this is 90% of what we're going to be doing. It's really, really simple. Uh, now, let's output something. Let's, let's say we want to get player one's email. We do our echo, which is the same as print. You can use print. Echo player one's email is... Now, to concatenate in PHP, all you use is a period. JavaScript uses pluses. There's some others that uses the and signs, uh, ampersands. PHP is just the period. So we do, and if you forget the period, it will tell you. It will error out on you. Player info three, which is our original uh, query. Now something new in the newest version of PHP that that I just noticed is that when you're building, when you're actually going to an array, you actually have to surround it. Well, let me, look, we're going to get the email. But you actually have to surround it with quotes, single quotes. But otherwise, it'll, it'll throw out an error. It'll still work, but it'll throw out an error and make your page real ugly. And this is something that I've noticed that's just lately new, but regardless, you don't need to worry about it. This this will work all the same. So that's basically it. What we did was, is we said, hey, include connect.php, because that's where the database information is. Uh, we built our query. We want to select all from players where name equals player one. And basically all means it's going to select name, it's going to select email, it's going to select ID. And then echo players one email is, and it should give that out. So first thing we want to do is we want to save open back up your internet, open up a new page, whether or not it's a new uh, browser altogether or you just add a new tab, and we're going to do local host slash tutorial test dot. There could be an error in this, who knows. The good thing about it is I'm doing all this in real time to where if I get any errors, we get to share the errors together. And there it is, player, player one's email is player at indyresource.com. So we know it's working, we know our database is connecting, everything is working. Let's say that we want to find out what the ID is. Now, one thing about, if you know anything about HTML or PHP or anything, 
you'll notice that if you do this right here, let's just create a new line and put echo player one's ID is player info three. All we're doing is putting our field name in here that we want to get. As you can see, I'm still used to the old way. Now, when we do this, you'll see how this, this won't error out, but it just won't look very pretty, and I'll show you how to fix it. Save it, go back to your Internet Explorer, and refresh. Notice how we have it on the same line. It's all bunched together. To fix that, go back, and right in here somewhere in the quotes, let's use a little HTML. That breaks the line. That basically think of it as a break. It's breaking the line. And let's go back to save. Let's refresh. And it's on a new line. So basically what we've done is we've created a small database with a little bit of information. We've built a query, built our connect.php, and we're able now to query all of our information from the database. And that is the end of this episode. The next episode, we're actually going to build a login page and authenticate and go from there.